so I think we should do, take this very seriously and, and try to understand this mechanism. When we presented our results in Birmingham in 1996, we were, of course, very excited to present the results, but much to our surprise, it was received very, very negative. And the only thing we had done was to present a scientific result which showed that the sun through the clouds might be very, very important uh, for climate. Uh, there was, of course, a reaction also from um, the International Panel on Climate Change, the UN panel. Bert Bolin, who was the chair, scientific chair uh, at that time, he thought it was irresponsible of us to, to say that something else than the CO2 could be the main driver for climate. So there's no doubt that the sun has an effect on climate. The whole climate community really hated the idea that the sun should have a major impact on climate. That was seen as a disaster. I was actually shocked about the, uh, the responses that we got. During the last 25 years, CO2 has been the dominating theory trying to explain all climate variation. However, if we look at historical climate, there's absolutely no doubt that the sun has been extremely important and you cannot ignore it. We're at the Dead Sea. And we're going to a place called uh, Nachal Batim, which is one of the nicest places where you can see uh, climate variations uh, taking place here. People have this uh, conception that the sun is this constant ball of gas that doesn't do anything. This is wrong. In reality, the sun can sometimes be very active. It's this uh, solar activity, this dynamic uh, nature of, uh, of the solar activity, which affects the solar winds and which affects the cosmic rays and which eventually affects uh, climate here on Earth. Climate variations over the past decades, uh, centuries, millennia, uh, can be re uh, reconstructed from many different places around the world. Here we're now located in the Dead Sea. Uh, 20,000 years ago, the Dead Sea was higher, it was much wetter, and the level was higher than, when, than where we are standing. And every year there were yearly deposits which were left on the uh, lake's uh, uh, floor. And here we can see those uh, annual deposits. Basically, uh, during winter, the dark deposits are left, and during summer, the bright deposits are, uh, are, are left. So the ratio between the dark and the white bands tells us uh, a climatic story, it tells us how the climate here varied uh, during the years. On these timescales of uh, centuries and millennia, you can reconstruct what the sun was doing using uh, cosmogenic uh, isotopes like carbon-14. What's interesting is that this carbon-14 is directly formed by the cosmic rays. So this and other results or other measurements from around the world tells us that the sun is affecting the climate. This link between solar activity and climate on Earth, it's not hypothetical. You just see it in, in the records. When the sun was more active, you indeed see that it was warmer on Earth and vice versa.
300 years ago, for example, the sun was not very active, and we were in the height of the little ice age when it was cold in many places on Earth. A thousand years ago, it was, uh, the sun was active, it was as active as it is today, and it was warm everywhere. The Vikings could uh, map all of Greenland because uh, the northern shores of Greenland were not frozen. Most of the people today think that most of the climate change is because of CO2. But this is wrong. Most of the warming over the 20th century is because of uh, the sun. If we look at Earth from space, we will see that about 60 to 70 percent is covered by clouds. If more cosmic rays comes down, we will have slightly more clouds. And you can imagine the opposite, fewer cosmic rays, we have a little fewer clouds. But instead of thinking of clouds as a result of climate, it's actually showing that the climate is a result of the clouds, because the clouds take their orders from the stars. After we found the link between cosmic rays and clouds, we only knew that it was a total cloud cover, but I had to find out what type of clouds. And at some point, it became possible with a new data set to investigate exactly this. And at that time, I got help from Nigel Marsh. Yeah, I, um, I sent that figure to you. He helped analyzing uh, these data. And much to our surprise, we found that the link is actually to the low clouds. So it seems as if cosmic rays are changing low clouds. All right, I'll speak to you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. And that is very, very good news for the whole idea. When I uh, got this uh, result, I thought the correlation was much better than I uh, ever uh, uh, dreamed of. If you decrease the amount of low clouds, it will be more heating uh, down to the ground. And in particular now, the, this new work that they shows that there's uh, only the low clouds that changes, which makes it very interesting. There's still a mechanism to explain this that's missing. And uh, it's now important to do the research to try to understand this mechanism. There's a fairly large fraction of low clouds, a large part are responsible for a large part of the cooling uh, caused by these clouds. The reason low clouds are so important is that they actually reflect a lot of the sunlight back into space. I mean, we know them when we travel in airplanes, these are these monotonic scenes that we see over the oceans. And they are wide because they are reflecting uh, the sunlight back into space. And you can imagine if you change the amount of low clouds, you change the amount of energy that the surface gets. That means that low clouds have a strong cooling effect on the Earth's climate. So if we have more low clouds, climate will become colder. And if we have fewer cosmic rays, we have fewer low clouds, and the Earth becomes warmer. Uh, 
the it's, 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 you, you mean with the ESPA data set? Yeah. It's in the infrared, what we've been looking at. That's interesting. Okay. Well, I first heard about uh, Henrik Svensmark's work when we became interested in looking at how aerosols, or very small particles, are produced in the Earth's atmosphere in the first place. I mean, this is important because all clouds are formed upon aerosol particles that are in the atmosphere. So you look, the satellite is looking at a specific parameter. I, I in terms know. of the work that we've done, what we've found is that the galactic cosmic rays are capable of modulating the aerosols or particles, small particles in the lowest part of the atmosphere. In fact, we can show that the aerosols produced by galactic cosmic rays are significantly modulated in the lower layer which contains these clouds that produce a cooling effect on the earth.